They see? Super easy. Super easy. easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? And then you would just throw it on the handle like so, and now it's a right hand crank. I like that. Again, gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today, we'll be getting up close and personal with quite possibly the most anticipated saltwater spinning reel of 2019. This, my friends, is the brand spanking new Tsunami Salt X6000. And I'll tell you what, never before has there ever been a reel that has claimed it can do what it can at this price range. This is a $379 reel that the manufacturer clearly states can be cranked underwater. Now, it's with that being said, when you're dealing with a reel that's sealed in, in such a way, for anybody out there considering ordering this, this is not gonna have that free spinning handle that you'll get out of a Dio or a Shimano. The restrictive seals at the handle entry points, at the anti-reverse clutch, and at the main shaft will add a little bit of resistance. But you can see here, it's not that tight. Some of the Van Stalls, the VSXs, some of the Z-Bass reels, and some of the VRs are in fact quite a bit stiffer and tighter than this. This is actually pretty darn good. Now, my initial impressions before I even got, it, got to handle a production model was, it's gonna be a coffee grinder, it's gonna be geary, it's gonna be super tight, it's gonna be clunky. And that was again, before I actually handled the reel. I, I couldn't have been more blown away at how, how wrong I was. This reel, in terms of overall refinement, which is something you usually don't really bring into the equation when you're looking at a, a sealed spinning reel designed to be fished hard in the surf, be dunked and submerged, climb up on rocks, all that kind of deal. You know, it's, it's been for the last, you know, 20 plus years, you expect there to be some geariness or a geary sensation. It doesn't exist. And on top of that, there is almost zero gear lash. See if you can see if the handle moves or not. I'll even pull it outward so the gear is kind of pulled further away from the, the pinion. Almost non-existence when, it, when, it's, when it's pulled outward, when it's regularly seated right after cranking or as you're cranking. It, it's non-existent. This is tighter than a Stella. Hold on a second. Let me grab one of my Stellas. This is an older Stella. And you can see... See the handle moving? Not a big deal, but I'll tell you what, when you're working a plug, when you're working a needle fish, and you're stopping and going, stopping and going, a lot of times when you're fishing reels like this in the surf, you're using retrieve rates that are, ugh, <laughs> sleep inducing. I mean, you're, you're cranking the handle this fast and then you're stopping, you're cranking this fast. It's nice not to feel that little re-engagement and disengagement in the gear lash. You don't see that very often. Very impressed there. Uh, the handle on this, it's not an aluminum handle. Whether you like it or not, it looks like it's an easily uh, replaceable handle. And I'll, I'll tell you what, a lot of times those machined aluminum handle knobs in the fall and the early spring, that gets cold. Whether or not this stuff, this is really the only true question I have in, in, in terms of how long it's gonna hold up. Is this material gonna last over years and years? But it feels real comfortable. It's super lightweight, fits my hand perfectly, nice and grippy, nice, nice and, I don't wanna say soft, but you're not gonna get blisters. You don't have to worry about the handle getting scratched up and cutting you or, or kind of, you know, after a couple sessions, just wearing thin on, you know, your, your skin thin. All in all, I gotta say, it's an impressive reel. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and start the teardown process and just see what makes this puppy tick. And from an outward appearance, you know, I know it only has one side plate versus the pen torque that had a side plate on the opposite side. It just screams pen torque at me. So we'll go ahead. Oh, let's listen to the spool first. That's a nice sound in the spool click. Pretty loud. The other thing that's really interesting is it's a fully sealed waterproof drag. And a lot of the, the sealed drags, whether you're looking at the pen slammer, they don't have a light minimal drag. Like the, the lowest drag setting is still two pounds. This one, it's, it's pretty darn light. 
So if you're fishing bait and that kind of thing, you can, you can just spike it up there and have minimal resistance coming off the rod tip. And the other thing that's interesting, so from off, four turns to fishable drag. One, two, three. Huh, let's do it again. I'm just curious to see how quickly the drag ramps up. So we have this side of the handle knob facing the camera. That's a half a turn. That's one, one and a half, two. That's probably about eight pounds, which is what most people fish when they're fishing the surf, right around that area, eight to 10. That jumps up quite a bit. So it's a pretty quick response, responding drag, which is pretty cool. Spool comes off easily. Nothing to come off when you remove the spool. Say if you accidentally take the spool off, guys that had van stalls from yesteryear, that drag knob, when it would come loose, you wouldn't really have an indication as to, you know, when it was gonna come free. Uh, me, I lost a drag knob once. <laughs> but what you have here are the spool supports made from what appear to be stainless steel, a shim and an O-ring. Go ahead and set those aside because we're going to be tearing this reel down. We have the rotor retaining net and a screw. We have an extra threaded screw here, which I believe is for the manual bail kit that comes included. That's the manual bail kit there. I'll leave that up top. I'll leave that out of frame for now. We're not going to get into that in this video. And you also have the wrench, which is used to remove the anti-reverse clutch seal and the side plate pieces here. So that's, uh, and the top of the spool, I believe. Let's take a look at the drag stack, if we can. I think it goes like that, okay. Huh. All right, real quick, I wanna point out that I had a little difficulty removing that top drag plate. Uh, my guess is a little bit of heat would allow it to come undone. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. So sorry about that, guys. And below here, you have three screws that hold in what appear to be the click plate for the drag. And let's see. Yep. Take a look how that works. That's pretty cool, I like that design. Back the handle off, again, thread on handle. And unlike many of the other waterproof sealed reels, you're able to change it from a left to a right hand retrieve just by swapping out these two bits here. And as a former Z-Bass owner who did have some issues, uh, those issues are well documented on the forums, I gotta say, it's nice to have a tool to be able to tighten up the bits that kind of comprise the side plate versus having to use like a leather belt strap to grip that knurled ring that, you know, puts the side plate on. But you see, super, super easy. Super easy, barely, barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? And then you would just throw it on the handle like so, and now it's a right hand crank. I like that. Again, not a lot of super spinners, not a lot of sealed reels allow you to, uh, change sides they're not an ambidextrous reels so definite definite points to uh, tsunami for including that in the design and from what i understand at least by a gentleman that goes by the name on stripers online uh, john yacht this is a one-off design this isn't a, a an oem sourced reel now if our eyeballs don't fail us the side plate screws use a T8 Torx head. That seems pretty good. Let's see, T9. T9. Yeah, T9 like really sticks in tightly. I'm really curious to see what, what it looks like in this gearbox. Decent amount of blue thread locker applied to the side plate screws. I want to make sure that the screws are all the same size. I'm 
Now, in terms of going uh, into that drag stack, applying heat isn't necessarily a, a bad thing. It, it just kind of comes with the territory when you're dealing with such a large diameter threaded uh, patch, I guess is the best way to put it, especially if there's any form of thread lock or, or something going along the lines of that. I, I found on the Tsunami Shield, in order to get the gearbox open, you had to apply heat. Wow, okay. So we have a full perimeter seal. We have shims for the main gear. Get that out of the way. Okay, so these ball bearings, the tolerance for that side plate bearing is uh, pretty impressive. It's, it's sticking in there pretty good. Let's go ahead. Use a bearing check tool to pop that puppy out. Appears to be a sealed ball bearing. Very, very tight fit to the side plate. Now, can we remove the main gear without removing the main shaft? My guess is, just a guess, this is new to me. Okay, so, do we have clearance to access the screw for the main shaft? Yes. Oh, my hands are all greasy, hang on a second guys. All right, now with the main shaft screw out, we should be able to pull out the main shaft like that it might be a little bit tight because sometimes some thread locker remains in that, that gap and it feels like an aluminum main shaft it's very light it's not stainless it could be titanium i don't know uh i'll see if i can follow up on that and add that in as a little anecdote so now we have the main shaft out we should have no problems getting the main gear out now and again, a very tight fitting tolerance between the inner race of the side plate ball bearing and the axle of the main gear, like so. Very adequately lubed. And all we're left now is the traverse block S shaped for more even line light. And The locomotion gear that looks to run. Can't tell if that's a bushing or a bearing. On a ball bearing. Beautiful. And again, another sealed ball bearing. Nice touch. And it's press fit with you know very good tolerances there. And at this point, we're uh, now ready to go ahead and remove the rotor and see what makes up this reel's anti-reverse clutch mechanism. And again, guys, in a separate video, I'm gonna break out how you swap this reel from a manual bale to a baleless with just the line roller arm. And I haven't been inside this reel, but I did cheat and see what size nut this is. And it's again, reverse threaded. So lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, and it's a 5 8 Look, and perfect. This is a 5 8 inch wrench. I can't remember the last time I ever came across a reel that used that sizing. Crazy, right? I thought maybe it would be a 15 millimeter, or ended up, if it is metric, it's a 16. All right, so you have a seal at the base of the rotor retaining nut here, a seal for the main shaft, and it's a very thick seal. See that? You have a collar on the inside of the pinion that the spool's shaft rides on when it's under load, which 
is more important in a fully sealed reel that's designed to be submerged than almost any other type of reel. It's more of a more or less a luxury on other reels. But when it comes to maintaining a watertight seal, having that collar and not allowing that main shaft to move this way, this way, or and, and out of center means it's always riding perfectly uh, centered in that rubber seal and it won't wear unevenly. That's a nice touch. And the rotor appears to lift off for the most part fairly easily. Yep. I say fairly easily because when these reels are used and abused, <laughs> that's not that easy. All right, so it looks like the collar is a little bit larger and it was brought out with the rotor, so keep that in mind, guys. And we have ourselves a bit of grease at the top. No doubt to form a nice barrier. Nice and tight anti-reverse clutch. We're going to find out exactly what makes up this clutch in a moment, hopefully. It's a handy little tool. No risk of doing any damage or marring, so you don't have to use crescent wrenches and all that kind of jazz. It's nice it actually comes with it. This, my friends, is the hardest way to, or the hardest area to effectively seal off a spinning reel. Cool. So this piece here, it has a rubber lip seal here. Looks like a quad seal. Hmm. Uh, okay. So it looks like the rotor rides on that seal. I just want to get a good idea of what I'm dealing with here before I pull it out. Okay. Sweet. So this is like a complete completely isolated cartridge. This is fairly unique. Not so unique in the, the, the true sealed spinning realm where it is a, uh, a fully sealed cartridge on its own. Let's see. Does this come out? Okay, let's clear this O-ring. A little bit of elbow grease to pull that out, which is perfectly fine. You have a bushing at the base here, which again, I'm assuming yep, designed to keep that spool shaft centered. Then you have another seal ball bearing and their anti reverse clutch. Which is a, a pretty standard. This is very similar to the Daiwa clutches used. But it actually looks like it's a little bit eh, we'll say beefier. That's a pretty sizable Universe clutch and a stainless steel pinion. Wow, that's pretty cool. And if you look here, this is the frame. The only thing really remaining is the side plate ball bearing. And 
this custom formed gasket when you put the four screws, compress it, seals off the body. And since I pointed this out on the, the first pen torque, which has proven to be a waterproof reel, so whatever I had said didn't really, you know, have it make a difference. But the locations for the screw holes are outside the perimeter seal, where on the torque one they were, the screws were here, here, and here, like on the inside, which I thought was just kind of goofy. Why, you know, why would you just design it differently? But yeah, so uh, this looks to be a, uh, a pretty darn impressive reel. You guys tell me, what do you think? I mean, it, it, it's, it's 380 bucks and Tsunami's come out with quite a few, a few reels that have proven themselves to do what they say. I mean, they're good fishing tools. At 300 bu 380 bucks, this is an expensive reel. The only thing that I can say that negative about it is it's untested. That's what it comes down to. If people are going to be buying this reel and fishing it like a van stall that has been proven over the past 20 years, you know, it's it, it needs to develop a history. But for the price of admission, this is pretty damn impressive. I, I dig it. I mean, the only other sort of sealed spinning reel is the Saragossa SW and the Spheros SW, but they have their limitations. This one is designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vanstall and Z-Bass. And comparing it to the new Pentork, which I believe has a different method of sealing the air clutch and only uses that hydrophobic coating as a last resort barrier and a seal ball bearing, this one actually has the O-ring for the pinion or uh, that sleeves around the rotor. I dig it. I really like how this reel is, uh, is looking, at least on the bench. Uh, in terms of fit, finish, and feel, there is absolutely nothing at all whatsoever that I can find any form of negative in terms of its fit and finish, and in terms of its its feel, it's perfect. I it it, it feels better than my bailed van stalls, which are a little bit different design internally than the non bailed. Uh, it feels a, a little smoother than my my first gen, my Gen two uh, Z bass reels that I had, and I, I gotta say, for somebody who was kind of thinking this is this was wasn't gonna be What's the best way to put it? When I first heard about this reel coming out, I thought it was going to be just an OEM sourced reel. They're just going to slap their name on it and bring it over. I didn't think it was going to be as polished as this reel is. And I kept on hearing that they're, they're, they're trying to get it right. They want to make sure everything's good before they start bringing it over. And I'll tell you what, as far as I can tell, they definitely they, they hit, the, hit the nail on the head with this thing. And it, it's become a very popular reel. It's tough to get these. I was trying to get one last week. But my buddy's shop, uh, <laughs> they ran out. <laughs> and it was like, damn it. <laughs> I put that affiliate link up, and you guys bought four of them or three of them. And they only had five, and they sold two the day before. And he was going to hold one for me. I was like, geez, that sucks. <laughs> it's, you guys beat me to it. Now, I, I have to fully disclose the shop that sent me this reel, uh, they, they were a little hesitant. Uh, the Fisherman Source has supplied me with a ton of reels that I've used for reviews. And... It's one of those things that they don't, they never know what they're going to get because I just call it like I see it and there's a lot of crap out there. So they were kind of hesitant and when I, when I opened up the package at my friend's house and I'm like, wow, this is nice. And he's like, he goes, oh, thank God. <laughs> those are the literal words out of his mouth. And I, I'm, I'm waiting to hear feedback from you guys that are buying these reels and fishing these reels. So I'll put links down below uh, to a couple of places that I know are carrying them. And I, I look forward to seeing how this reel does in the long run because they just proved that you don't have to charge $700. The Vanstall VR, which is the, you know, formerly known for five minutes sub aqua, which was a project from Rob K that he sold to Van Stahl that I thought was only purchased by Van Stahl because the market was kind of such a, it's such a narrow market. They couldn't afford the extra competition coming in at a lower price range. So Van Stahl was kind of either forced to buy it, you know, to get along or, or they would just lose their market share. 
and uh, this could be a, a disruptor for sure. And uh, it's with all that being said, guys, I, I, I thank you all for showing up. Without you, I wouldn't be here. And you guys are, are the best, <laughs> plain and simple. And until next time, guys, tight lines. I hope you guys got something out of this. If you guys were on a fence or you just wanted to see what this reel is all about, here you go. This is the Tsunami Salt X and it's bare naked form. So far, I, I definitely dig what I see. Definitely. I, I, I foresee a lot of guys using these reels. Hands down. I don't see any, any reason why this won't be a, uh, a good investment. So take care, guys. Bye-bye.